In many ways, you might say that Bernie Claser is like mortgage royalty here in southwestern Ontario. The nicknames are all over the place. Uh, let's see. Uh, the King of Clinton, the Emperor of Exeter, uh, the Marquis de Mitchell. Um, he is the Mortgage Lord of London, Bernie Claser. Thank you so much for joining us here on Leadership Conversations. And how do you, in your 15-year career as a mortgage broker, handle this assortment of titles? Oh, that's uh, you're, you're very kind, Garen. I'm, I'm a humble person. That's, that's more than I expect. Um, I just, uh, I enjoy what I do, I love what I do, and uh, that's why I guess I'm, I'm pretty good at it. Well, one of the things, you know, as you've been watching some of these segments on Facebook, um, you've got to tell us about this. I found this on the internet. It says, uh, fall off the horse, you get right back up. And in the, in the case of what we're dealing with right now, here in the midst of, of, of the pandemic and all of the leadership challenges, uh, that we're facing, you were telling me this is actually your dad's quote, and there's a story behind that. Yes, yeah, so uh, when my father was an equestrian rider back in Czechoslovakia, and when we, I was little, we always had horses and ponies, and obviously my father taught me how to ride horses, and of course we didn't always have the best horses, we had the crazy ones. So when I was a kid, I would, you know, as soon as you get bucked off or fall off when you're training a horse, you have to get right back up because you got to let the horse know who's boss. So my father always said, if you fall off the horse, you got to get right back up. And I've used that for my business for my whole life. Well, and how relevant is that right now, Bernie, with what we're dealing with? Because you're in your role as a mortgage broker, as soon as the pandemic hit back around the second week of March, you were one of the first people I thought of here in London is you're going to be right in the eye of the hurricane. Real rough. A lot of clients calling. Um, everyone was worried about uh, the situation, and I was fielding a lot of calls, emails, and I was just, you got to keep everyone calm, right? Uh, everyone's scared. So I was more of like a mortgage psychologist than <laughs> uh, a mortgage broker, but uh, it's kind of calmed down and things have kind of gotten a lot cleaner and better. Um, but uh, it's obviously a lot slower now in London with the business, but uh, things are still trucking right along. Um, we're still getting purchases in and refinances, but uh, we really need to get people back to work as soon as possible. Yeah, I was going to uh, talk to you about that in the sense of you're seeing this really play out in terms of, you know, London, Ontario, for those watching, London's about what, Bernie, 400,000 people. It's a great, actually, when you think about it, London's a perfect microcosm of every average city in North America in some respects, wouldn't you agree? And can you, can you speak a little bit to, okay, there was the initial impact, but how are things sort of settling out to give people some peace of mind right now? Well, before the, the pandemic, London was crazy. It's one of the hottest real estate markets in Canada. Like two weeks before I was getting five, six deals in a day, you know, just crazy, 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 10, 10, 20 offers on a house. Um, and then all of a sudden it just obviously slowed down and stopped, but it's kind of picking back up again. I got a, a deal in today. It was $70,000 over asking. So people are still buying. There's still that pent up demand. Mm -hmm. um, so I think on the other end of this, we're going to be probably busier. So that's how I'm, I'm playing it positive. I'm telling clients to just be patient, stay the course. Um, especially buyers. Um, if you don't have to sell, just, just wait. Um, but I think it's an awesome, awesome market here in London. You know, and, and you just brought something up and I'm, I'm curious to know your deeper thoughts on this. Um, in times of crisis, the value of patience, I don't think can be overstated and staying calm with your feet on the ground. So people from all over North America are watching this. From your perspective, Bernie, and especially with your, your parents having coming over from Czechoslovakia in 1968, the Russian tanks are rolling through Prague. They come to Canada. What did you learn about the value of patience that is not only helping you and your clients right now, but anyone watching could really gain perspective from? Well, my parents came here in 1968 with two suitcases and not a dollar, maybe 10 bucks on them. So they're the typical immigrant 
we had nothing growing up, Gareth. Very poor family, but they always provided. And my dad always, and my mom, sense of hard work. And, you know, if you do the right thing, treat people with respect, you're going to do well. And that's how I built my business. And um, I think just going forward is just, you got to be patient. Like crap's going to happen. And, you know, good times, bad times. We had 2008. That's when I was you know, just in the middle of my career mortgage business. I had my best years in 2008 and nine with business. My, my trajectory went up. So I was building my business. So I try to tell those stories to other, you know, younger mortgage brokers or people are just trying to get in. Just stay the course, be patient, you know, look out for the client's best interest and you will be rewarded. And that's, that's what I think, because there's unfortunately, Gary, right now there's, there's sharks in the water. And that's what really gets me upset is because in crisis, there's sharks that take advantage of people. So I try to communicate as much as I can to my clients before they do something silly, go get these 30% loan shark loans when I could get it for eight or 9%. So there's, there's absolutely tons of opportunity for people to get out of trouble. Just have to call me. How valid. Now, a lot of business leaders are watching these conversations, Bernie. Um, how valid is the comparison? There was up until the pandemic, you were a peacetime CEO. Now you're a wartime CEO. Tell us about what you're going through as the leader uh, of a company, a small business, trying to find its way and thinking like a wartime CEO. Um, <clears throat> I think it's just the main thing is communication with, with your staff. I have two full-time staff. I'm still paying them. They're not working full-time. The one doesn't want to come in due to the, you know, he's an older gentleman, but it's okay. Um, but it's just, you're, you're talking to them. And then the main thing is just interaction with clients. Obviously we're doing a lot more of this. I was always a face-to-face -face kind of person. I'm on the phone more, but uh, as a leader, you just have to communicate and be honest. Like we don't know what tomorrow's going to hold, but I'm positive that if we get through this sooner than later, everything's going to be okay. Just don't jump off the cliff. People like relax. That's, you know, we've, uh, this is something unprecedented, but I think we're going to get through it. No problem. Now, one of the things that, uh, you know, when we moved to London, Ontario, you were the guy we met, we got referred and we've enjoyed doing business with you ever since. Now, since that time, we've learned a lot more about our friend, Bernie Clayser, uh, called by others, the King of Clinton and the first mortgage Lord of London. We've learned, for example, he enjoys family time uh, when he can get to Maui. We've also learned through Facebook that he's a bit of a wizard, a bit of an award winner. And we've also learned, Bernie, that you know how to bring in the big fish. <laughs> oh, so yeah. I know you didn't expect this, but... You know, what happens on Facebook does get shared with the world. Oh my goodness. That's and one of the stories I wanted to share today was I never forgot and I will never forget the birthday card, Bernie, with that handwritten note and the little Tim Horton gift card. And you know, out of all the birthday presents I got and the wishes, there's my mortgage broker sending me a $5 card. And I think it speaks to a bigger thing. I'm making you blush, I can tell. Yeah, yeah. But I, I and I had to post it on Facebook. Look what I got. Because I was so thrilled to go into the Tim Hortons that day. Nothing like a free cup of coffee and a cherry cheese Danish. But the point is, Bernie, how much do the little things matter? I know you've built a business on little things. How much do the little things matter now? Um, they, matter, they matter more now than ever. Um, just to, you know, keep those relationships with your clients or, or even like, like my colleagues are calling me and I'm, even if they're not with my company, uh, like I'll help anybody. Uh, I think it's, uh, in these times we have to stick together as business partners, you know, as you know, you're a media person or, you know, your, your, your thing, what you're doing with your, your company is fantastic, but, uh, we all just have to share ideas to get through this mess. And I think that's the only way is just, you know, bounce ideas off because we've never been through this. So uh, I'm open to these little interviews or talk to people, but I'm just a mortgage guy. I'm not here to save the world, but um, my clients are, are my passion. And so. every little thing does matter, Bernie. And that's why I think it's important as we, as we kind of wrap this up, if you have any you know, words of wisdom, words of advice that you can pass on, I mean, you're the son of, 
European refugees who, who came to Canada for a better opportunity. What can you kind of pass on going forward to help people fill their cup and, 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 and lead it in, in these, you know, historic times? Um, the biggest thing I've learned is uh, you have to be kind to others and you have to be empathetic and do not judge people by a lot of, like people are quick to judge people. I could tell you a story about a few different things, but the biggest thing is, is we have to be kind to one another, um, do the right thing for the client, no matter the situation. Uh, and then your business will prosper. If you do, if you take care of your clients, they're going to take care of you and then you're just going to get more referrals. So that's, that's my advice to other people and, and people getting into the business or other leaders is, and just take care of your staff too, Gary, because, you know, I've got staff been here 10 years, five years. Yeah, uh, you got to pay them well, you got to treat them well. And I think that's important for small businesses right now is they're taking care of their people. Um, so if we take care of our people, we're going to come out on top. Very, very well said. Bernie Claser uh, from Real Mortgage Associates in London, Ontario. And, and, you know, I think what Bernie said is so true, especially now since everything is magnified during this situation, during these historic times, the little, as smallest, tiniest act of kindness can go such a long, long way. We are seeing brands actually being not only built, but also destroyed because everyone's watching and everything really matters. And I can think of few people that that one small gesture of that little handwritten note and that Tim Horton gift card went a long way. And Bernie, I really do appreciate you jumping on this call and doing this and sharing your ideas with everyone. Thanks, Gary. I appreciate uh, the invitation. It's uh, my pleasure to, to, to do this. Thank you. Bernie Claser from London, Ontario. Just ask Bernie. That's all you got to do. If you, if you want to know anything about mortgages or how the real estate market uh, is, is going from day to day now, uh, just ask Bernie. And uh, we, again, we thank Bernie Claser for stopping by here. How small business moves forward, how we all lead together in these most historic times.